All right, so in the last video, we talked about sort of the overall UI of the app and, and why the main activity looks the way it does. In this video, I want to introduce this idea of data binding, which is going to allow us to understand why the list looks the way it does. Now, this is a topic that is more complex than I want to spend a lot of time on, but I want to try to provide you with an overview. Now, I promise there's no magic here, but there's a lot of code in libraries and, and sort of helper uh, methods that I don't really want to go into. Um, so instead, I'm going to try to provide kind of a, a high level overview here. Um, so he here's, here's the idea. We're using a library to render this list. Now imagine you're building a list rendering library for Android and I tell you, here's a, here's a bunch of items. Um, what do you need to know in order to figure out what the UI should look like? So there's a couple of things. First thing is, what order should those items be in? And if you noticed, when you completed the sort by name comparator to pass an earlier test case, you might have noticed that now the list of restaurants is sorted in the UI. And the reason is that the, uh, the library that we're using, we told it to use that comparator to determine the order, okay? So we told it how to order things. We also need to tell it how each item should look. And to do that, we use more Android layout. Actually, we provide what's called a layout fragment. Um, I'm showing you a little piece of that. So sorry, so this is in, this is all confusing over here, okay. So this is in itemrestaurant.xml and I'm looking at the code view. Now this is, I can show you where this is configured but it's not all that important. The idea is that this is the instructions that we give to the list library to tell it how to convert a restaurant to something on the screen, uh, an element in the list. And so some of these attributes may be familiar to us from, or at least somewhat familiar, we've seen something like it before from looking at the main activity layout. Um, and there's, there's two things that this handles. The first is what should be shown? Like what should it actually look like? This is sort of like Printlin for the display. And it's more complicated than Printlin because the display is more complicated than Printlin. The other thing that we tell it is what to do if the item is clicked. And that's not something that we're gonna deal with yet, but we will come back to that later because we are gonna handle that. Okay, so let's, so one of the things that, I, you know, I really encourage people, whenever you're doing stuff like this and you're trying to figure these things out, one of the best ways is to tinker because that gives you a sense of like, am I even looking at the right code or not? So let's make a small change here and, and try to understand what's happening. So I'm just gonna change the size of the text in this list, and then I'm gonna rebuild the app, rerun it. What am I expecting to happen? I'm expecting that the emulator is gonna show my app with much smaller text, right? It seems reasonable. Um, but if that didn't happen, then I would be like, oh wait, something must be wrong. I don't understand what I'm doing. I'm looking at the wrong file or something, okay. And indeed, I see the smaller text, so I'm onto something. Now the text that's being displayed here is actually, so, uh, and again, this is part of this data binding library. So you can think of this layout fragment as having access to an instance of the restaurant model, which is what's uh, configured right here, and able to access its properties. And so restaurant.name is what's inserted into the text for each item in the list, and that's why you see the name of the restaurant. What if I wanted something else here? Well, the first thing I have to do, unfortunately, and this is my mistake, because uh, I should have shipped the code this way, is after a place, the single, the double quotes with single quotes. And now what I can do inside this is I can use typical spring, uh, string concatenation operations. So what this is going to do, this is what I think. So I've changed the text back. So when I rerun this, I expect the text to be back to the size that it was when I started, but I expect each restaurant name to have the string hello uh, appended to it. All right, so let's run that and see what happens and see if that's what, what, uh, what in fact is going to, to, to take place. Um, there's a whole, so if, if you go over here, there's a whole uh, website that you can look up with the Android documentation about essentially different expressions for how to, how to uh, insert things into these data binding uh, layout fragments, right? Um, and so there's lots of different ways that you can do this. Uh, here you see I just concatenated a string, right? But it looks the way I expect. So now I see this hello value there. Okay, the next thing you're gonna have to do to pass the next test case is to get the, the items in the display to look a little different. We're gonna need to add some information to them uh, to pass the next test case. Now the other thing I want to just briefly talk about here is like, how does this get configured? 
right? And the idea here is that there is code in my main activity right here, and there's no magic here, that sets up this library, it tells it what part of the screen to use, and then we have code in this adapters.kt file that I'm not gonna show you that tells it things like which layout fragment to use and what sort comparator to use and things like that, right? So all the information that this library needs to know is provided to it, and then it does its thing to actually uh, maintain the list. Um, Okay, so, so that's an introduction to data binding. This is another one of the things, anytime we do UI in the project, like we will guide you because I know that this is like this really gnarly complex thing that's scary and weird and uh, it's super fun, I hope, but also like somewhat of intimidating and there's a lot here, right? And so this is a place where we will definitely kind of take you by the hand. Um, but uh, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're talking a little bit more specifically about exactly how to handle this test case that you need to pass in order to get uh, past the next uh, the next test case on this checkpoint.